Good evening, everybody. Right, I'm just going to check the tech a minute, make sure I'm in the right place. It is quite possible that I am not. Okay. Am I in the right place on the right night? Oh, that's somebody. That's good. All right. If you're just joining me, please say hello in the chat so I know that you're here. I'm just trying to get my tablet to link up a minute. Bear with me. Ah, there we go. That's better. Right, let's turn the sound off on that. Let's take, take the bottom off on that so I can get it a bit closer. Fab, that's wonderful. Right then. Let's see if I can see what's going on. Hi, brilliant, wonderful. Hi, Liz. Hi, Sally. Hiya. Oh, wonderful. Do you know what? It's been one of those, well, one of those weeks actually this week and um, definitely one of those days today. Um, I've been rushing around headless and... Um, so I'm just hoping that everything's going to go okay tonight, oh, fingers crossed, um, because, um, yeah, I've, I've just kind of grabbed everything together at the last minute. I've had, so today's been the last day for Alexander at school today. So he's finished his GCSEs, which is hooray, thank goodness for that. Six weeks of pain all round, um, as, as teenage boys give you. Um, but um, so he's not going back to school anymore. That's the end of it now. He's just got to wait for his results and see if he's got into college and everything. So that's really exciting for him. Um, but to celebrate, he decided he would bring three of his teenage boy friends home with him. So I've had four teenage boys here um, all afternoon, eating me out of house and home and um, trainers and bags and oh, teenageness everywhere. Um, so I had to have just a, a massive clear up before before I could um, start getting myself ready. So I do apologise if there's any clattering and banging in the background because he's still got one of his mates here waiting to be collected and they're playing FIFA or something on the Xbox and they seem to be making an awful lot of noise given it's virtual football. Um, but anyway, how is everybody else? <laughs> Hi Val, hiya. Um, how is everybody else today? Well, that reminds me, I did have a nice relaxing lunchtime um, with Val, hair by Val today. Look, no grey. Yahoo! <laughs> so, <laughs> very pleased about that. Um, but yeah, how's everybody else? Everybody liking the kind of warm weather, although it has started raining here now. I'm looking that way because um, that's my back doors and um, it's um, chucking it down in the garden, frankly. <laughs> but um, how is everybody else getting on? I will have a quick slurp of my tea while we wait for a few more people to join us. I've been busy, busy with stamping up stuff this afternoon as well. Even managed to rope um, rope Evelyn in when um, she came home from school in, in order to help save her from the teenage boys. Um, I roped her into um, die cutting loads of stuff for um, for Coffee Club and also um, packing up new catalogues woohoo, for everybody. So Sally's good, that's great. And Liz is fine, but surrounded by more alpaca wool after shearing. Oh, wow. And what are you going to do with it, Liz? Do you sell it? Do you spin it? Do you what? What do you do with all your alpaca wool? Oh, numbers are going up slowly. Hi, Marion. Hiya. If you're just joining, please say hi in the chat so I know you're here. That would be really great. I'm testing out my nails as well while we're speaking because I've literally just slapped a bit of pink sparkle on them because they were looking so awful. Might have had my hair done, but I didn't have my nails done today. So I really need my nails done as well. So. How is everybody getting on? Okay. Hopefully everybody um, has managed to have a bit of a look at their kit. Hi, mum. And um, if you are a hater of fussy cutting, but like crafting along, hopefully you've been able to cut a few flowers out of your flower sheets. Um, so Liz does a bit of felting. Oh, lovely. And booked on a spinning course later in the year for her alpaca wool, this is. If anyone wants some for felting, you're very welcome. Oh, that's really generous of you. Thank you very much. 
I, I have done some needle felting, actually. Well, we've all done a bit of needle felting, I think. Um, those of us who go to Devon um, and various other, we've done various other kind of events where we've done um, uh, needle felting, which has, has been really good fun, actually. I really enjoy it. Although, you know how they say, um, make a shape that looks like this, a teardrop or a whatever, whatever the shape is. I That bit I'm absolutely rubbish at, actually. It's almost akin to my quilling ability. Um, you know, the little paper curls, which as Marion well knows, because I moan about it all the time, I am truly rubbish at quilling. It is my nemesis in paper crafting. <laughs> anyway. Right then, I think, um, I know there's a few people that are going to join us late anyway, so I think we'll get started. So first of all, um, welcome to June's monthly card club. Um, little apology, normally I try to make it the last um, Thursday of the month so it's easy to remember and everything, but the next three months I'm not able to do it on the last Thursday, so I'm really sorry about that. Uh, next week, I do really have a really good excuse because it's my birthday, so um, I am taking my birthday off. Um, but um, the, the next couple after that, so for July and for August, um, and unfortunately the last Thursday of both those months I'm away, so um, we're, we're going to have a slight change around to the dates. But all the details will be in the emails that will get sent out as well. And obviously, um, if you can't make it live, you can always um, uh, do it afterwards because you've got the videos and the videos will stay in the Facebook group, but they also go on the YouTube channel so you can pause, rewind, whatever you want all the time. So that's cool. Okay, what else have I got on my list? Catalogues, it says. Right, I need to tell you about catalogues. So ooh, let me get my pile of catalogues here a minute. So first things first, this catalogue, the one with the windmill on the front, you've only got one week to order from this catalogue. So if you've got things that you really want from this catalogue, they are not going to get any cheaper and they are potentially going to disappear altogether um, because there is hardly anything that is transferring over to, to the new catalogue. So if what you want is not in the new annual catalogue that you've just had, that the big one, um, then it will be going. So at the end of this month, i.e. a week today, on the 30th of June, um, this catalogue will finish and it will be gone forever. So if there's things you want, you need to place an order. So that's the first thing. And obviously the things that are going, um, there's loads of stuff in the sale as well. So, so it might be well worth you, you having a look. Okay, so um, this is the suite that we're using tonight. It's called Hues of Happiness. And I know that's around the wrong way. It's from this, the new annual catalogue. And it's if you want to follow along, look at the products, whatever, see what dyes you get, what colours are in it, all that kind of stuff. Um, then it is page 108 and 109 in the new annual catalogue. That's that's what we're using tonight. So that's Hues of Happiness. Ooh. Tip stuff over. Um, so when that little mini catalogue disappears, we will get a brand new mini catalogue. And this is it. Ha -ha. So it will be um, the July to December mini catalogue. I can't show you anything inside for stamping up rules, um, but I can tell you, you are going to love it. You absolutely are going to love it. It's got some really cool Christmas stuff in there, but we don't have to think about Christmas yet. I know some of you have already made your Christmas cards and everything, and that's fine. Um, but for those of us who want to wait a little bit longer, we don't have to think Christmas yet because there are loads and loads of other really cool things in there. Um, for those of you who are watching me on the Facebook page, um, you might have seen on Saturday that Evelyn and I took part in a demonstrator only event online, online crafting, just like this, um, that was called Creativity Now. And we made things using a suite from the new catalogue. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. So that's what we're going to be doing in August, actually, is that suite. And it's not a Christmas suite. I'm not doing anything Christmas, remotely Christmas, until um, September, till everyone's back to normal and holidays are over and all that stuff. Anyway, in the meantime, there's loads to keep us busy as well, because not only will the new uh, mini catalogue be winging its way to you, um, anyone who's placed an order, anyone who has got um, kits coming to them um, for coffee club, car club, those kind of things. Um, I'll be sending out the catalogues with those packs so that you, you get it all at the same time. Or you can look it up online anytime you want to. 
but also during July and August, we're having again a second celebration um, that we normally only have once a year, but um, last year we had it twice and this year we're having it twice as well. Um, so in the celebration, um, we've got, there's loads and loads of really lovely things in here. We're also going to be making some, uh, some things using some of the products from here because the products that are in here that you get free for a £45 or over order, um, you are, are also coordinating with the stuff that's in the mini catalogue. So, um, so we will be doing that as well. And there is an amazing joining offer that you're going to love. So if you've got a big order of Christmas stuff that you want, then um, don't just order it through me, join instead. You don't have to do anything else once you've joined, but you'll get £31 worth of free products of your choice, plus um, an amazing um, extra goodie that, um, yeah, it's wonderful. If you're a fan of stationery like me, um, new stationery, then you're gonna love it. And I've just filmed a little video um, of the extra free gift today, which is going to go uh, live on the Facebook page and um, on the YouTube channel and stuff. It'll be on there next Wednesday, so you can have a look. But um, but if you're that keen that you want to know, then just feel free to talk to me about it before. So that's catalogues. Um, sweet share is the next thing. Um, so the in colours sweet share, which you can find if you scroll back on the Facebook page. And it's been in the emails if you're on the mailing list, that kind of stuff. Um, the sweet share, um, I need to know by the end of today if you want to take part in sweet share. So it's your opportunity to get various bits of samples from the new in colours. Um, so you don't have to buy full packs of everything. So if you bought full packs of everything, it's 70, nearly 80 pounds, I think. Um, but my sweet share is, is a share of all of those in colour items, ribbon, um, uh, dots, little enamel dots, cards and envelopes, cardstock, um, loads of stuff, um, glimmery, sparkly paper in ombre shades, oh, it's wonderful, um, loads of stuff anyway, um, and my offer is 17.50 for the sweet share, and you'll get five different types of product, but several of each thing, so. All the details are on the on the Facebook page and, and in the emails anyway. So if you forgot about Sweet Share, you've got till the end of tonight. So just whip me off a, an email um, while you're crafting or watching or afterwards, because um, I won't place the order until tomorrow, but I do want to get on and place that. So that's cool. Um, what else we got? Events. Last bit of news before we do some crafting. Events. Um, you might have seen that I've got a new event on um, both on the mailing list and um, on the Facebook page. And that is um, an in-person event at No Labels, um, which is um, a uh, mental well-being, mental health well-being um, shop and um, kind of meeting place, a hub really, um, in the middle of Lechlade. So right in the middle of the shops, right by all the cafes and what have you. Um, and I've been asked to go and do some workshops around there, which is brilliant. I'm really excited about that. So my first one um, is being advertised at the moment. So if you want to come, I've got everything on offer. So you could bring a friend, have a coffee and a cake afterwards or go out for lunch, have a wander along the river, whatever you want to do. Um, but I'm, I'm offering the kind of full range of, of offers from uh, a really simple cards that are for brand new crafters um, all the way up to, um, you know, more complex things. The complex ones are going to be using um, the little bird, cute little bird. I can't remember what it's called now. Sweetest little bird, something like that. So uh, uh, anyway, a set that we haven't used yet at all. So. So you've got that opportunity as well. And it's um, the morning coffee and cakes and three cards for £15. So pretty good, good value for money as well. OK, right then. Let's get on with some crafting, shall we? OK, I'm going to turn the camera down and um, then I will show you what we're going to be doing. So let me get the camera to turn around. There we go. There we go. Turn it back a bit. And let's put some lights on as well. That'd be handy, wouldn't it? How's that? That's a bit better. 
Okay, right, let's just make sure. I've got everything in shot a minute. It's better, so let's bring it down a tiny bit. There we go. Okay. So what have we got? Sorry, I've been missing comments here. What have we got? Um, Amber, sorry, late. Sorry, she's late. Dog ate her homework. Ha <laughs> ha. You're funny. I'll get my own back with the fussy cutting in a minute. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. OK, so you should have a kit that looks a bit like this. Forget the cutout flowers because I've, I've cut mine out already, some, some of them. So you should have um, several sheets of um, patterned papers. Um, including some sheets with fluffy flowers on. Um, you should have some white cards, some navy, um, and then various other sheets of full-size cardstock, okay? Um, and that is because some of the cards that we're going to do, um, we're going to cut out and measure from scratch. Then you've got a little goodie bag with um, various other bits and pieces, including some um, bling, your glossy dots, which are absolutely stunning. A uh, chocolate bar, mini delight, um, and some other die cut pieces, ribbon, your raffle ticket, all those bits and pieces. OK, so hopefully you've got all of those bits. Let me just put mine down here out of the way so that I can find all my bits in due course. Um, one thing I would say is, as I said, I've already cut out um, some of my um, flowers for for mine. And some of you, I'm sure, will already have done a bit of fussy cutting or will be doing it while I'm chatting. Um, the reason I've cut mine out is because the dies in this suite cut out all the flowers and all the leaves that are on the patterned paper, um, which just makes it so quick and easy to um, die cut a whole sheet. So this month, because I really wanted to focus on this suite, um, I cut out a third of a sheet of um, both of the flower colours, so the bluey mauvey ones and the um, yellow and pink ones. And um, I cut out a third of a sheet of each. And out of that, I have managed to make all the projects that you will be seeing from me this month, whether they are um, uh, or the cards that we've got in Card Club and Coffee Club or um, all the projects that I've been putting on the blog and I will continue to put on the blog this month as well. Every single one of them has come from um, a that single sheet, um, single third of a sheet of, um, of uh, um, flowers. So it's really good value for money. OK, so the first three cards that we're going to make are these three. So I will just show you these to start with and then we will get started with one. OK, um, so some of this is going to need some measuring and cutting and the fussy cutting of the flowers um, and some of it won't. So um, some of it will be quick and easy to do. OK, so let's start with. Let's start with this one, actually. So this one, if you look at the front of the catalogue, is actually the card that is on the front of the catalogue, amazingly. So you are going to need your pre-cut and scored piece of white, thick white cardstock. So it's already cut to size and it's got a score line down the middle. That's how you know um, that it's the right one. And then you're going to need one of your patterned pieces of paper. And if you're doing the same pattern as me, if I can find the piece of pattern paper, you're going to need, let me see which one it is, I've got to work out which one it is now. I think it is that one. So it's the one, is that the right one? No, that can't be right. No, it can't be that one. Must be one of these then, mustn't it? Must be one of these. Yeah, that's better. Oh, that's it. That's better. So it's the one one that looks like this. So it's the one with the full spectrum of colours across the middle. Um, and we're just going to cut out that middle chunk. OK. So if you start at the blue end and just cut a, a clean cut across there. I said I might not be have everything. I haven't got my um, trimmer. So. Bear with me a minute while I grab the trimmer. There we go. 
So we're going to start by just cutting through the middle of that kind of pale blue section. There we go. And then we're going to measure down from there so that you've got a, a complete piece then ready to put on your card. And your measurement needs to be 14.3 centimetres. Or, I will give you that in inches, it is five and six eighths of an inch. So five and six eighths of an inch or 14.3 centimetres. And then the width is 9.9 .9 centimetres. So you do need to take a little sliver off the side so that it is the right size then. You get those bits out of the way. So you then should have um, a piece that is really pretty much just yellows, greens and a little bit of blue at the top. And that's the, the bit that's going to go over the front of your card to start with. I cut out all my pieces and didn't do any for you. I know, Amber. Would have shown favouritism, so I just can't do it, I'm afraid. Okay, so fold over your white thick card base and crease it. And then you're going to stick your um, piece of um, coloured patterned paper just flat down onto the card. So straight down, oops, flat onto the card. No, no 3D or anything like that. Just So I'm just going to stick it down with seal. I'm going to open it out so I don't get any bounce back. And it leaves a little bit of a border around the edge of the card. This particular roll of seal, I don't know if it's because it's um, warmer weather or what, but it's really, really sticky, this particular reel. So I keep getting getting myself all stuck up with it. Hi, Joe. Hi. How's London? I know I am a meanie, Amber, I know. Okay. So... Once you've got that background piece stuck on, you can then put this card to one side. Put that out of the way for a minute, that, that bit. And then the next thing you're going to need to find is this piece of white card with um, the little, um, it looks like it's been torn out of a notebook down the side. That's what you want to find. And that will be in your little plastic bag of bits. So if you can find that bit next. Yep. so this one it's got sort of like um it might not even have the the holes out of it like mine hasn't so what the next thing to do is to um push those holes out so that it does actually look like it's a page it's meant to look like a page torn out of a notebook so i'm just going to go along and try and get rid of some of these holes if i can it's not too sticky that they're all going to stick in here oh there we go starting to move She's got my brush out, really, shouldn't I? She'll get the dye brush with. Let's see if I can get rid of them. If you haven't got one of these, you need one, let me tell you. If you've got a die cutting machine um, and you do, you die cut bits and pieces out, like fiddly bits and pieces, you really need a die brush. They're wonderful. Um, because you can not only use it to get the little bits out of your out of the um, piece that you've cut so any any little fiddly bits but you can also use it to clean your your dies out of you know how you get bits stuck in the, the die as well you can use it for that too so that's really cool there we go okay So how's everybody doing? Who's crafting along tonight? Let's start with that. Who's crafting? I'm pretty sure mum will be. I'm pretty sure Sally will be. Just going to get some. Yep, Sally's crafting along. I thought she might be. Oh, and Liz is as well. Brilliant. 
just gonna get my stamp set. Yeah, and Mummis as well. Find, find an ink pad as well. Anybody else? Oh, and Marion and Dee. Oh my goodness, everybody. Wonderful. Oh, this is great. All right then. So, um, hopefully you've got your background paper stuck onto your card now. So the next thing to do, once you've found um, your little piece with that looks like it's torn out of a notebook, what we're going to do first is we're going to stamp some background leaves. So if you've got a stamp set with a couple of leaves in, and Amber's trying to, good. Um, then we're going to add some stamped leaves underneath. And this is because we're trying to recreate the cover image from the catalogue. But if you don't have any leaf stamps, you don't have to add them. You can just cut out more stamp, more leaves out of your patterned paper um, and do that. So if you're not doing any stamping, now might be the time to start cutting out if you've not cut anything out yet. So you want to cut out some leaves and a couple of flowers. Okay, I'm going to use this set that goes with the Hues of Happiness suite. It's called Happiness Abounds and it's um, a photopolymer stamp set. Um, I have to say, I really, really love this stamp set. Not only because I like the flowers and I'm not a big fan of new flower sets ever, but this one I really love. But mainly because I really love the writing. Um, I love the fact it's got happy birthday and best wishes and congratulations all in the same one. I like because those are my ones that I use probably most as well as thank yous. And it's got a sending many thanks for all you do. So that's really good as well. Um, yeah, I just really like it. I love the fact that it's line drawn, which you don't always. And oh, Jodie's crafting along too. Brilliant. Um, so, yeah, so this that's that's why I love this suite. And I would say if you haven't got a flower set or you are looking for a new flower set or you just want to recreate what we're doing tonight, then honestly, this is the one for you. I, I haven't bought a new flower set in a really long time i mean stamping up bring them out all the time and i never buy them because i've got enough flowers in my opinion but this one is on another level let me tell you okay so um it i've there's a couple of different leaves in this set one has um five leaves on it five little leaves and one's got two bigger leaves so i'm going to start with the the little leaves and i'm using granny apple green for my my green which is a lovely, bright, vibrant green. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to put some leaves so that eventually they will be poking out of the corner of the of the flowers from behind the flowers. So if you can see on the original card, just going to add a few leaves, nothing too technical at all. Don't worry if you don't place it perfectly or you perceive you don't place it perfectly. There isn't a right and a wrong to this at all. Um, you might find that you've stamped a bit too much leaf for your liking or not enough leaf. It doesn't matter because you will be able to cover it up or uncover it by moving your flowers and your cutout leaves around. So don't panic is what I would say. And then again, I'm going to do another one in the bottom corner here of the other leaf shape. Clean the stamps off as I go. So literally just a couple of random leaves. Now, if um, you don't like the idea of that kind of random taking a chance, it's a bit bit too scary to do that. Then you can place your cut out flowers. So if I grab my yellow flower, for example, you can place your cut out flower where you think you might want it to go, and then you can hover over the top and work out where your where your um, stamped image needs to go. So it is it is possible to do it, do it without. So that one was Granny Apple Green. Um, I'm also gonna stamp the, um, the sentiment while I'm at it as well. And there is, there should be a piece of card, I believe. Did I put a piece of card in everybody? Hang on, hang on. Don't grab that piece of white card in your pack for a moment, just in case. That's the wrong one. Oh no, no, I think that is the piece that I intended it to be. So um, you should have a bit of white card in your little pack, a little bit of spare white card, and that's um, for you to um, stamp your sentiment on. So 
this one this one has wishing you all the happiness um this one i am going to put on is not you are wonderful in every way where's the thanks one is the one i want put that on no sending many thanks is that going to be too big let's have a look oh is it going to fit on there oh just about brilliant okay I'm going to have sending you, sending many thanks for all you do. Have to mount it sideways on my block. Um, and I'm going to need the pink, the darkest pink in this suite is Melon Mambo from the Brights collection. So it's a really vibrant, bright, bright pink. Cerise almost, I would say, personally. I'm just going to try and line it up with the bottom of the um, piece of card just because ooh, almost lined up straight almost that's because I'm I'm looking from a, a bit of a distance because of the camera angle so I, I have to kind of stamp from way back <laughs> um, there we go I love the thing I love about these sentiments is not just the script, but I love the fact that they're sort of long, thin sentiments. So you can put them along the edges of things. That's that's one of the things I really like about them. And I'm just going to get my trimmer and just trim that off so that that is square as well. Well, I will do. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's really wonky, isn't it? Right, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to have to start by trimming it down, I think. I like the words. There we go. Let's start with that. And then we'll do it from there, I think. Just need to square it up a bit. There we go. That's better. That I can get it. Um, so the words are actually going straight along the piece of card as I made a bit of a mess of it. There we go. So it's literally just a straight cut um, sentiment. It's not. It's not um, fancy cut or anything like that. Okay. Save that little bit. Might need that a little bit later. Okay. So um, then what you need to do is decide what flowers you're going to add. So this card on the front of the catalogue has um, a yellow, big yellow flower, a big pink flower. Um, it has some um, die cut leaves and some other die cut leaves. So we'll stick all of those on. And the way that this card has been um, made is using dimensionals and um, some glue as well. So um, the first thing to do is to raise the, the big flowers up on dimensional pads. Um, so that's what we will do. You don't need loads of dimensionals for these, even though they're quite big flowers. Just a couple um, it, on each one is great because if you've got a bit of space around the edges, that then gives you um, room to be able to poke the leaves underneath, which is what you want to do. And I will show you my leaves that are, are not have not perfectly come out well actually I'll show you with these this flower as well actually so if you notice I don't know if you can see that but if I hold up the card hopefully you can see the the bottom of this flower you can see that it's actually an edge flower so it was a flower that was on the edge of the paper but that is not going to stop me from using it because although it hasn't cut out completely if you look on my original card, the sentiment is covering it over. So that is not going to stop me from using this flower on this card at all. I am going to put the yellow one there. I'm going to put the pink one there. And the bit that was um, the bit that was flat so that there was the edge of the flower has just poked underneath. So I can honestly say there isn't a single flower in this suite that I have not used in these papers um, because it's just so easy to hide it with a bit of another flower or a leaf or put it under the sentiment or whatever. 
then when you come to the leaves you just need a bit of glue a bit of i always use a bit of wet glue on my anything i'm going to poke underneath um around the back of a, a 3d pad um, and then shove it underneath can you see there was a bit of a gap there where um i'd sort of slightly maybe misjudged the where i'd stamped the leaves so i've just filled that gap in using these um die cut leaves and i'm going to do exactly the same with this one um, I'm just going to poke it underneath and fill in the hole where I think it will look better. But you don't need loads of glue. You just need a dob of glue and then shove it in underneath. And then the sentiment will go across the middle. And you can have it as far in or as far out as you want. So if you're going to have it overhanging, don't forget, don't put any glue behind that bit. I'm going to have it about there, I think. So I've got a bit hanging out over the edge. And then you need to bring back your original card base. Now, to get the same effect as there is on the front of the catalogue, um, this bit is, is raised up. So I am going to stick 3D pads, dimensional, but I'm going to use dimensional um, strips instead. So dimensional strips come in a pack like this. I've started using them and probably um, talked about them before, but they are brilliant. You get, um, I think you get three actually, because I've used one already. Yeah, three strips in a pack. Um, and it's, so it's 40 individual strips plus the surround. So actually you've got 42, you know, you've got two, two, four, six, and the top and bottom so loads more actually than it that in, in it in fact um says um and um they they're whole strips like this that you can tear or you can cut so if you're doing an edge like this is it's really really easy and you don't have to waste loads of your lovely um individual dimensionals to do it and you can just snap it off with your fingers doesn't matter this is quite a hefty piece that we're going to you know it's got quite a lot of flowers on the front now so i'm actually going to put a piece in the middle as well so that it doesn't sag because i don't want it sagging um in the middle um so yeah i would highly recommend these they're on the adhesives page at the back of the annual catalog um so with all the other dimensionals and glue and tape and seal and all that stuff but honestly they're brilliant and obviously you could cut them up to make really small dimensionals if you wanted to as well you've got that option and then i'm placing um placing this piece further to the left than to the right but central top to bottom basically there we go and then the only other bit to add is a few bits of bling. So I'm just going to get out some of my glossy dots. So your glossy dots are in, um, I think that's Pool Party, and then um, Daffodil Delight, Melon Mambo, and I think it's Gorgeous Grape is the purple, but um, they are absolutely stunning, actually. Really love these. You get loads in the pack as well, which is good. I'm just going to randomly put a couple as it was on the original picture and there we go two different sentiments but the same and that is our first card made so how are people getting on i'm just going to have a slurp of tea and i will get some raffle tickets out in a minute Let me just have a look what we've got for prizes. Drop the tape, so that's no good. There we go. And then the pen as well to write down. Here's one. Okay. Okay, so while you're um, finishing up those cards, let's just put those up to the corner there. Um, I'll share with you the raffle prizes for tonight. So we've got a paper stack, six by six paper stack. We've got the Art in Bloom stamp set and we've got um, a set of Abstract Beauty um, 
cards and envelopes. These are full size cards and full size envelopes. So um, quite a decent size pack. So that's our three prizes. Let's have a, a shifty round. And our first raffle ticket is number two, four, six. Let me just check and make sure it's not mine. No, mine was 247. That's good. So 246. Anybody got raffle ticket number 246? And if you have, which prize would you like? Cards and envelopes, stamp set or paper stack? That is your choice. Do let me know. Even if you're not crafting along, if you're just watching, if you can just get your raffle ticket out and have a look, that would be really helpful because I end up with loads of prizes at the end. Oh, Amber, that's you, hooray, at last, she says. Um, which would you like, Art in Bloom, cards and envelopes, or paper stack? That's good, I can stick that in your goodie bag, so I've got a goodie bag of orders and co um, coffee club and stuff to go to you, so that is cool. Which one would you like? <laughs> oh, I think it stopped raining here as well, finally. Stamps. Stamps are yours. Art in Bloom is winging its way to you. Right then, cool. Okay, we'll have another raffle ticket in a minute. Okie dokie then. Right, so how's everybody getting on? Give me some thumbs up if you are with me and happy to continue. And I will find the next card. Oh, there we go. Thought it had gone quiet for a minute. Brilliant. Okie dokie. Okay. I think what we will do is we will, so let me put that one to one side. Um, I think we will do this one next. And if we've got time, we'll do this one at the end. But if not, then this one follows very similar principle to um, that the original card that we've just done with um, raised, the, the background plate is on 3D pads. I've stamped congratulations down the side background paper flat on just the same 3d pads underneath the flowers and then the leaves um, poked in behind using glue add some dots okay so i think we'll leave that one and uh, if we've got time we'll go through it but we have got um, um a, a fancy fold to do as well so um i think we will do this one next instead so you're going to need your knight of navy piece of card which you're going to need to fold and crease. That's your base. You are going to use your um, piece of patterned paper that is cut already. And you need to use this one or measure another one that is the same size um, because it's cut to the right size for you to be able to have spaces in between, little gaps in between. And then, I believe, let me just have a look through my pack. I don't think there is a piece of card already cut to size for this bit. So we're gonna use the white, a piece of the white cardstock, which you had a whole sheet in your um, pack. And I will give you the measurements. Where's my ruler? So we're going to need a piece of white card that is eight and a half centimeters by 12.3 centimeters so let me write that down so otherwise i'll forget so um card to eight and a half centimeters by 12.2 centimeters and in inches that is uh three and oh my goodness me one two three three and three eighths of an inch by uh, five inches. 
okay so if that is the piece that's what you need to cut okay so let's do all the cutting first so we will start with the piece of white card and let's cut that out first so 12.2 12.2 by three um eight and a half there we go that's the right size oh. oh no maybe it should be a bit longer than that or maybe my measuring wasn't very good hold on a minute let's measure again i might have got the measurement wrong before you start cutting probably measured it right in inches and wrong in yeah, it's definitely five inches, but in centimetres, that is, yeah, I did measure it wrong. Sorry, 12.8 centimetres, not 12.2. It's been one of these kinds of days today. Right, where's my pen gone? And I will rewrite it. Oh, there it is. 12.8 centimetres, apologies. 12.8 centimetres. Good job you've got quite a bit of white card. Let's do that again, shall we? So 12.8 by 8.5. Otherwise there won't be room to stamp, which won't be any good. There we go, that's the right size. Okay, fab, right. Oh, and then we also need to cut our um, patterned paper. So the patterned paper is already cut to three inches or um, 7.6 centimetres. So you're going to divide it up into three. So you want to cut this up into one inch strips. And one inch is two and a half centimetres roughly. Don't worry too much if it's not exact. It's not going to be the end of the world if it is not exact. You want it to look roughly the same. And you need to keep your patterned pieces in the same order that you cut them in. So that as you can see from this one, you can see the white space in between the picture. But you can see that it is a complete picture. They're not just random strips put on here. Yeah. So the next thing to do, let's get that card base out of the way, um, is to stick your strips to the pattern, uh, to the white card, sorry. Um, and you're going to leave a little gap all the way around. Um, so keep them in the same order, like I say, that they that they were cut up in. Let's move that out of the way of the instructions. Um, and then just take one at a time and stick them um, or take them to the um, white card so that you don't get them mixed up. Okay, sticky, sticky glue. And obviously make sure that they're, as they are flowers, make sure they're the right way up as well when you're sticking them. So you just should have a small, um, a small margin around the outside and it should be the same size all the way around the outside and in between as well. And if you want to be super precise, you can start with the outside too and then finish with that middle strip to make sure that you've got that same edge all the way around. Oop. Over a little bit, shall we? But the main thing is that you line your flowers up so that um, they still look like a complete picture when they're on the card. That's the main thing. Okay. Once you've got that done, the next bit is to stamp your um, sentiment across the bottom. So this one's got a happy birthday, so I am going to stamp congratulations along this one, I think. Very different. And it's stamped, I've stamped it in Knight of Navy. Um, if I can find my block now, I'm doing well today. 
using things left, right and centre. Right, what did I do with my block? It must be here somewhere. There's the stamp, so it can't be far away, can it? She says, hope, hoping that it will magically appear in a moment. It's the trouble with um, Perspex blocks though, isn't it? That they are see-through, so, oh, there it is. It's right beside me, obviously. Okay, so. Again, I'm going to do this one diagonally. Oh. Night of Navy ink. Tap, tap, tap. And as straight as you can manage it with an even space either side. There we go. That's not too bad, actually, that one. For an on-camera stamp, that's not too bad at all. Okay, the block is by my side. I will try and remember that. Okay, then the last thing that you need to do before you mount it on the card front is add your ribbon. So this ribbon is also from the um, mini catalogue that is about to expire. Um, it's called Night of Navy Denim Ribbon um, because it is made of denim and it is, it's lovely actually. It's really soft, um, as you can see, and really kind of flexible. So that's great. Um, so what I'm going to do is tie a knot and then um, the ends of my ribbon, I'll just hold that up to the camera and just see if you can see that on camera. There you go. Um, yeah, then the ends of the ribbon. So I've just tied a knot, a reef knot. So left over right, right over left, um, snipped the ends off. And then what I've done is stuck a glue dot behind the back of the ribbon tails so that they stay exactly where I want to put them. So I haven't glued the actual ribbon band at all. I've just put a glue dot behind the back of each of the tails of the ribbon. So that is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to go all the way around. You should have plenty of ribbon to do this with. Um, decent enough tails so that I can trim them. So what was that? That was left over right and then right over left. And then just pull them sort of diagonally from each other so that it goes tight into a knot. There we go, just like that. And then you can, because we haven't stuck the ribbon down, you can move it around before you um, trim the ends off. So I'm going to use my snips for this. You do need, like the Stampin' Up snips, those of you who's got them, you need a really sharp pair of scissors for cutting this kind of ribbon because um, otherwise you will find that it um, sort of chews at it. And that obviously is not what you want. You want a really nice clean cut. Um, and then I'm just gonna grab some glue dots. I'm gonna stick a dot behind each of my ribbon tails so that they stay put and stay where I want them to be. The other thing is if you um, if you do stick glue dots behind your ribbon tails, um, that does help to stop things fraying a bit as well, because it tends to be the movement of the ribbon um, or it being moved through putting the card in an envelope, in the post, people picking it up and looking at it and fiddling about with the ribbon, all that kind of stuff. That tends to be what makes the ribbon fray. So if you don't want any of your ribbons to fray, um, then the best thing to do is to um, secure it with something um, around the back. So um, now I've got that, um, it just goes on 3D pads again on the front of the card to give it a bit more dimension. So again, I'm going to use those strips, the 3D strips, um, just because it's a big expanse and it will secure my ribbon in place at the same time and all those good things. I'm going to cut it this time, be a bit more precise. There we go. I don't think this one, this is, hasn't got too much weight on the front, it's only got that, that little bit of um, 
paper so I'm not going to stick anything down the middle it should should stay up without that I think and I'm going for right in the center of the card there we go no bling on this one because the flowers are really busy so I want them to be the star of the show but if you want more is more then feel free to add some bling that's absolutely fine And there we go, that's card number two. Okay, so while you're finishing off that one, I will do another, let's do another raffle prize, shall we? Okay. What's this one? This one is 250. Anybody here with 250? And if you are, would you like the paper stack or the card for an envelope? Two five zero. Who's got that one? Anybody want to claim two five zero? No tankers? Oh, oh, Liz, brilliant. Uh, could you have the cards and envelopes? Absolutely, you can. Liz. I've just sealed an envelope to go to you, so that is just typical, isn't it? So I will send it to you um, the next time I send you a package, if that's all right. No, Amber, I'm afraid it is not you. So we've just got the stack of papers left. Right, brilliant. Okay, so that is card number two done. Fab, how are you getting on? Give me some thumbs up if you are keeping up and your card is looking beautiful. Hopefully, I'm sure it is. Yep, yeah. oh fab, good. Lovely, that's really good news, really good. Okay, so we'll put that one to one side and um, I will just show you the fancy fold that we are going to do. This is the fancy fold. Ta -da -da. It's really beautiful. I personally, I absolutely love this card. So it stands up like that, a bit like that. Um, it is bigger than your average card, so hence why you've got a whole sheets. To be able to cut things out and I will measure everything as we go along and tell you what to score and everything um, because it is it is bigger so if I show you that up against um, a standard size card it's quite a bit taller and it's quite a bit wider across the bottom so it's great if you've got to make um, you know a wow card for somebody for their special birthday or because you've got a lot of people to sign it because Potentially you could, as well as having some um, a space inside, you could actually put a big white patch on the back for people to sign if you were, you know, if like, like you were making it for a group of people to sign. Um, so it's a great, it's a great wow card. The design would be brilliant to do for kind of wow Christmas cards and stuff as well. So um, yeah, so, so we've got that. So the first thing we're going to need is that piece of... Um, pool party cardstock to make the base so that's what we're going to start with and I will give you the measurements as we go along if I can find my ruler there we go right now this one I'm trying to remember I think this card is all in inches I'm afraid I'll, I will confess now it is all in inches and I'm not going to convert it or we'll be here all night if I have to convert it so um the first thing is to get your trimmer and we're going to um, trim it down. You're going to need the extra arm out the side as well for the first bit um, because you want a card that is um, 10 inches long with a um, score in the middle at 5 inches. So that's the first thing is to cut it on the long side at 10 inches. 
and the height of the card is seven inches so it's ten inches by seven inches and a score in the middle at five inches okay so 10 inches, let's go back up a minute. Let me write it down as I go along. So card base. Card three base. 10 inches by seven inches. Score at five inches. And then you need to add some other scores as well in order for you to get that concertina effect so you're going to score at one and a half um all the way along so um from from the you know from the score line so um let's go which way should we go let's go this way no let's not go that way let's start from this end so if i've got what did i say it is it's five inches isn't it so one and a half that going to work i might have to trim a bit off I'm trying to remember now one two so you need one two three three scores so actually i might or it's but it is possible that i've just told you the wrong measurement which is not helpful in the least and i have i've, I've taken off one of your okay that's fine um we will okay so I should have told you actually to have scored it the whole way um, to have left it all the way along this is because I'm not reading the measurements I'm measuring it as I'm going along which is very bad for me so I apologize for that um, so if you've not cut your piece yet then um, you need it the full length of the A4 I apologize full length um, I will if you have don't worry we'll adapt it so let's let's try that again so you do want it seven inches high don't you let's measure that yeah you do want it seven inches high but you want it the full length that's right let's try that again right don't worry if you've cut it off already we will adapt it i promise but if not, then you want to score at five inches and then one and a half inches after that, every one and a half inches. So it would be at six and a half and at eight and at nine and a half. And that's one, one, two, three. One, two, three, and then at um, 11. And at 11, you're going to cut it off. You are going to cut it off. But do not worry. I know we can adapt this. So there we go. That's better. Okay, so forget the 10 inches. It's 11 inches. Score at five and one and a half inch strips so this happens when you're crafting and it's fine we can adapt and it'll be fine so you should now have a piece of card let's go over it again that is seven inches on the short side and 11 inches overall on the long side and you've scored it at five, six and a half, eight, and nine and a half, and then cut it off at 11 if you were cutting at the end. And if you've made it smaller than that, what you could do is you could, um, you could narrow your strips so that they're one inch strips instead of one and a half inch strips. Or you can just have less folds and that will work too. So don't don't panic if it's not 
if you've not got it exactly right. So I'm, I'm going to stop there until people have caught up and make sure that everybody is happy before we move on. One point two five. Sally, you're a genius. I knew there'd be somebody out there who would help. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're an angel. Um, yeah, so if you've cut it, my original, which was rubbish, and I apologise, then you can um, cut it at 1.25 instead. In fact, let me let me do that with the one that I discarded, and then I can show you that it's perfectly possible. So it would be five, and then it would be um, 6.25. And what will be, then it'll be, so it'll be 7 point, what was it? 6.25, 7.5. And then um, 7.5, so that'll be 8.75. Eight and three quarters. There we go, yeah, it does, it works perfectly. Sally, you're an angel. Thank you very much. So yeah, you can still get you can still get your folds out of it even if you've cut it um, too short, like I originally said. Okay, so um, I will make that one up later, I promise. But for the time being, if you've got your scores in the right place, um, wh wh whichever measurements you've used, you then need to fold it over like you're folding your card in half for your first one. Now it's going to be too long on the one side. Um, if you've done the correct measurements, if you haven't, then it will match up, but that's OK. And then your first fold, you're going to fold back on itself. So you're making a concertina now of the front. So you just keep going zigzagging across all your folds. OK, so then when you're looking at your card from above, that is what it should look like. So you should have a W on its side and then the whole of the back. So if I turn it round so the back is, is facing me, a W and then the back. All right. So that should be that should be your card base done. So you can put your card base to one side once you've done that. And then the next piece that we're going to do, we're going to forget the front bit for the time being. The next piece is going to be this inside back piece. So we're going to have a piece of um, your fresh freesia, the purpley card, cut to size. And this will be the same, doesn't matter which, which measurements you're using. Um, and a piece of patterned paper. And the patterned paper I've cut from... Um, the another piece uh, with the variegated colours, but you can use whichever one one you want. How many score lines there should be? One, two, three, four score lines. So your centre score line, and then three extra ones. Okay, so you're either scoring at one and a half all the way along from 11 inches or if you measured it 10 inches like I originally said then one and a quarter inches all along okay so like I say the next bit is your is your back piece which we will cut to so this is your matte layer for the inside and it is four and a half inches by six and a half inches. Let's write that down. Um, inside mat is, what did I say? Let's measure it again. Six and a half inches by, I think I said four and a half, didn't I? Yeah, four and a half. So six and a half by four and a half. Now, you also need enough um, fresh freesia left to do this little card that's on the front as well. 
okay so you do need to make sure that you're you're cutting it so that um, you've got enough left to make this little card as well so cut it cut this piece of card as economically as you can so that you've got plenty left to make that little mini card so um if you measure the top of the short side you've got plenty enough to do six and a half inches out of so with the long side at the top cut four and a half inches so that you've got plenty left and then six and a half inches which if you've got the old trimmer like me is right in the gap unfortunately there we go and that is your that is your back inside mat layer and then you also need a um, patterned paper layer which i'm going to try and find what have i got here so i'm going to use um this piece and i'm going to cut it off so that i um basically don't have any pretty much no yellow so that piece is going to be um i think i think it's a quarter of an inch off all round it should be no half inch off so it'll be four inches by six inches so um dsp layer will be six inches by four inches Oh, my laptop keeps telling me that it wants to snooze, which is not helpful. Let me just tell it to go away for a minute. Okay. <coughs> so six inches by four inches. Uh, six inches, there we go. By four inches, which it already is cut to four inches, so that's cool. And then you're just going to mat that up and stick that on the inside panel of your card. So just tape, glue, whatever, all flat this is. No dimension to this bit at all. And obviously if you were doing a white panel on the back of this card as well, sticky tape, um, then you would do your white panel the same size um, as your matte layer. I mean, you could also, you could matte it as well if you wanted to, your, your white layer. Um, so you could add some more pattern paper or some more colour behind it if you wanted to. If you were going to get loads of people to sign it, for example. I might be doing one of these for work soon because um, one of my colleagues at work is leaving and I did, the last person who left, I made a a fancy fold for for us all to sign so there we go so that is the inside nearly finished the only other piece you need to do um is the white the white piece which i've stamped on so the white piece let's find a bit of that white card that we had earlier on and the white piece measures two and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches two and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches <coughs> oh excuse me i've got a tickle in my throat and that's had some tea okay so let's get the trimmer back. I wonder how big this bit is. Can I get away with that bit? Oh, just about. No. Oh, no. Yes, I can. Yep. So let's do four and three quarter inches there. By two and three quarter inches. Perfect. So that is going to go on your inside piece and I've done a little bit of stamping on mine. Um, so I've just stamped a little flower and a happy birthday. So I'm just going to add that 
now into mine. Um, I'm going to stamp this one as I've got it out with the um, Granny Apple Green. Green flowers and why not? And a happy birthday on this one. How is everybody doing? Have I completely confused you with all the measurements or are you hanging in there as you're all such brilliant professional crafters i'm sure you've sussed it out like i said i knew something wasn't gonna work today it's been one of those days so <laughs> my um my dishwasher packed up last night as well so i spent half the day today doing washing up which has been an absolute joy not let me tell you. Right. There we go. And stick that right in the middle of the um, the back inside. Okay. Just going to pause there for a moment while. Um, people catch up do let me know how you're getting on give me thumbs up if you need it so the white piece mum is for uh, two and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches so i'm just going to write down the measurements for the little little card that's on the front so Put a little card and then we can start cutting that in a moment can I check those please uh, four and three quarters by two and three quarters is that okay so your 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 fresh freesia purple layer is six and a half by four and a half Take half an inch off for your um, patterned paper layer and then two and three quarters by four and three quarters for the white layer. No problem. No, that's fine. I'd rather you questioned me and because it's quite possible, as you well know, that I get it wrong. So the little card measures seven inches by um, four and a half inches. And then you score on the long side at three and a half inches to make it um, a fold in the middle. But I won't start doing that until people have, have caught up. And you're going to be making that out of uh, fresh freesia. So. so give me some thumbs up when you're ready to go on to the little card. This was one of the problems we had at the weekend, to be honest, um, when we were doing the creativity now, um, because um, we were all busy beavering away and, and crafting along and trying to keep up. And um, but the, the um, people who were creating were going so fast. It was really, really difficult to keep up with them. Really difficult. And also we had a Facebook group set up for um, the team that I'm in as well. So my fellow demonstrators. So we were all trying to chat to each other as well. That's probably why we weren't keeping up, to be fair. And we were all trying to chat to each other at the same time as um, crafting as well. So it was really challenging to try keep on top of it. Even speedy crafter Evelyn struggled a couple of times to keep up, which, you know, you know what she's like. She crafts really fast, so... Um, but yeah, even she struggled a couple of times to keep on top of it. Okay, so I've seen one set of thumbs up. Give me some more if you are if you're at the same point as me and you're ready to go on to the little mini card on the front. That'll 
would be great. If you're not, don't worry, we can hang on. I will find my trimmer while I'm waiting. You should have enough fresh freesia left um, to cut this with ease. So the little mini card is um, seven inches long and four and a half inches wide. And you're scoring along the long side, so along the seven inch side at three and a half inches. And then you're going to cut another piece of white to go on the front of that as well. So I will write that one down as well while I'm going along. That one, yeah, is three and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. So white, three and a quarter inches by four. And a quarter inches. I think that's what I said, didn't I? Three and a quarter by four and a quarter. I think that's what I said. Let me have a look. Yep, yeah, three and a quarter by, yeah, four and a quarter. So let's fold the little mini card over and then cut your white layer three and a quarter by four and a quarter. You should just have enough left out of your, oops, don't tr uh, score it like I just did. Three and a quarter by four and a quarter. Make sure you've got the right blade, would be helpful. And that will just go on the front, but um, don't stick it down yet because um, you're going to do some stamping and then you need to stick it the right way round. So, so you should now have, hopefully, your card base, your actual card with all the back inside done. Your little mini card that is made out of um, fresh freesia, the pale purple colour. And then your white layer that's going to go on the top of that that will form the front of this card. So I'm going to add a little bit of stamping and some more flowers. So I'll bring the original card in. So again, there was some, some leaves stamped and some raised flowers. You could put a happy birthday across there as well if you want to. Whatever you want to decorate the front, that's what the front's going to look like. So I will grab my granny apple green again and do some more leaves, I think. Just stuck my finger in the granny apple green, so be a bit careful now. Ooh. Uh, where's my leaves? Let's get back on the leaves again. over those bits again. Not quite. Oh, yeah. Better. And I've got a bit, a bit of ink um, that's transferred from the block, but I'm not worried because I'm going to be putting the leaves on top, so um, that's going to be fine actually, it'll cover it up. 
So I'm going to go back to my pile of, of flowers and leaves and find that lovely kind of bluey green one, a few leaves and I think that purpley one will be good. I'm going to stick and then I shall stick some leaves to cover up my splodges of ink or I might even add some bling to it as well. I should kind of stick them like that I think. So it covers up my splodges a bit. That will work. So same as before I'm going to stick 3D pads behind the flowers and then um, add the um, just glue to the, to the tips of the um, of the leaves so that the um, leaves poke in behind. Dimensional backings everywhere. Who else finds dimensional backings when they go to bed at night? Sign of a good craft day if you if you wake up and there's dimensionals in your bed, I think. Let's <laughs> put that leaf up there so it covers up that splodge. And this one the same. There we go. So I've still got my three pieces separate. So I've got my actual main card, the little mini card, and now I've got my white layer as well for the front of the mini card. Okay. So I'll just stick my stamps back in while people are just catching up with that bit. How's everybody doing? Should I move out of the way of the um, of the measurements? Oh, thumbs up! Oh, fabulous! Lots of thumbs up! Brilliant! That is good. Good, good, good. Okay. Okay. Um, if you're at a similar point to me, then. The next thing you need to find is your two strips of um, flowery patterned paper and these are going to go down some of your um, <coughs> some of your folds um, so you might need to trim them off a little bit more if you're making the smaller size card but if you're making the if you've got the bigger size card then these should be the right width to go down You'll just need to trim them off lengthwise. Okay. Um, so let's just get a measurement for lengthwise. And lengthwise they are uh, six and three quarters of an inch long. Six and three quarter inches long. Wait a minute. So you're going to need the side arm again. So six and three quarter inches if you're um, actually it'll be the same length no matter what size card you're making but um, you might just need to trim the width a little bit if you're making the slightly smaller card. Oops. The camera won't help. Okay. Don't need that bit. So, once you've got those patterned paper pieces, you are going to stick them to the two. If you fold your your fold right up, you're going to stick them to the two pieces of the of the concertina that are facing you when you pull it up slightly. So that's the one on the front, and then the one inside that is also facing you so so not not ones that you can't see just the two that you can see 
when the card is facing you. Okay. So let's stick those down next. If I can find my tape roll. There we go. So just the ones that are facing you. So if you've if you put your um, concertina out flat, it's miss one and then stick a patterned one, miss one and then a patterned one. And again, just make sure that your flowers are up the right, right way. You don't want upside down flowers. If you have got a particular design on the pattern, these ones aren't so bad because the flowers can be a bit higgledy piggledy. But if you were doing it with different papers, you need to make sure your flowers are up the right way. OK. Just going to move that up there. And then you should have still you should still have your um, front white. Plate and your. Um, little mini cards that are separate at the moment. So let's just, I'll just hang on until people catch up with that bit. So when you've got to the same place as me, give me some thumbs up again and I will have a quick slurp of tea again. Yep, lovely. So I don't want to get to the construction bit before um, everybody's at the same point because construction is where it could all go wrong. <laughs> it's not difficult, but you just need to make sure you're sticking the right bit to the right bit, if that makes sense. Otherwise, it might not look like you want it to. So we'll hang on until everybody's giving me some thumbs up. Should have lots of little strips and bits of card left over as well. Oh, we've got some more thumbs up. That's cool. And you should definitely have plenty enough um, patterned paper to be able to make extra cards with. Um, and they look absolutely fine on um, a plain white base. So um, if you don't have all the co coordinating colours, that's fine too. Although they are really beautiful, so worth thinking about if you are thinking about getting some more card. Okay, just give you another few seconds and then I will go on to construction. Got very inky fingers tonight for some reason as well, I don't know why. OK, right. So for construction, first of all, let's get rid of the main card base. Let's move that to one side and concentrate on the mini card first. OK, so if you open out the mini card so that you've, you've your fold is in the middle and it's kind of poking up like a like a tent. OK, then it's the left hand side that you want to stick your white um, patterned the piece that you've put your flowers on okay the left hand side which I know feels completely alien because it feels like you're putting it on the back side of the card but that is definitely the right place to put it so stick that one down again it's just going flat on the card because there's plenty enough dimension on this card you don't need to add any more with this layer so stick that one to the left hand side of your card And I, I will put some more bling on this card because I've got plenty of smudges on there that I need to cover up. But 
um, I will put my bling on last thing um, because you need to do a bit more flattening first. So the mini card, when it's up like a tent, should have your white piece um, that you've decorated already on the left hand side. Then what you want to do is you want to turn it over and you're going to stick some tape or some glue. If you're going to use wet glue, just do one bit at a time. But you could do this with um, seal or snail or something, but you're going to stick it down the inside edges, both the left hand side and the right hand side. So I am going to use tape because personally, when, it, when I need to um, stick something in situ, I find that a lot easier to do. So you're sticking it on both of the inside edges. Just right up against the edge. You don't need loads of it. Don't come out too far into the card because you will then find that your card is sticking to the back and all sorts of chaos will reign. And then you are going to stick it to the the first the first concertina fold which is the one with no paper on it no patterned paper on it you're going to stick it inside to that one and you're going to stick it quite close to the quite close to the edge um, and the best way to do it is kind of to line it up over the back of over the um yeah the back of the card um, and then close it down to where you want it to be and then you're going to stick the other piece to the very front edge. So I would say just line it up where you get a rough idea of where you want it to be before you completely stick it down. And then if you can stick it down one bit at a time, that will work best. It Well, it reduces your risk of, of disaster, I would say. So you're sticking that one bit to the inside and then and make sure you've got it folded when folded flat when you try to stick it together because you want it to go in an envelope remember even if you're going to hand give it to somebody you still want it to go in an envelope so you're sticking it to the inside um of the the, the first concertina fold with no patterned paper on it and then the very front concertina fold that has patterned paper on it. So it should look like that. So you're sticking it to the outside edges of your W, if you like. So if you if you go back to it looking like a W, your, your, your points should be opposite each other. Hopefully that makes sense. And that is your card finished. So all you need to do then, if you want to, is... Or if, as like me, you've got lots of finger marks everywhere, you can just add some bling to cover those finger marks up. So I need a very big one for that one there. And maybe let's have another very big one for that blob there. And then some random smaller ones down here where I've made a bit of a mess as well. And being as we've now got four, better have five. So let's stick another one up in the corner there. As you know me and my odd numbers, like an odd number. There we go. And that is your concertina card. Made. In fact, I don't even know what this one's called, to be honest. It's probably one of the accordion group of cards, but it's quite cool anyway, isn't it? If you can get the measurements right, it's even better, really. But thank you so much again, Sally, for correcting my maths. I owe you one. Wonderful. OK, so while people are finishing that one off, let's have our final raffle prize. And then I just want to show you a couple of things. Um, I will leave, as you've all got photographs of the um, pink card, I will leave you that one to, um, to make up yourselves. Because um, it's exactly the same as the first one that we did. Oh, 247, that is mine, so we'll get rid of that. Um, actually, let's have another, no, let's have that one, the one that I took out. Um, and then um, I want to show you the bonus project. 
um, which is on my blog. So um, I'll show you where that is. OK, so the final raffle prize is a, a paper stack and it's number 253. If you are 253 and you are watching, please give me your name so that I can stick this paper stack down against your name, which would be wonderful. Always good to give it away to somebody who's here. Where has my pen gone again? Oh my goodness me. Oh, there it is. Obviously, right by the side of me where I can see it, clearly. Um, don't think it's you, Amber. I think the stamp set is yours. Your only win for tonight, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Oh, Jodie, brilliant. I love it when everybody's here. That's so good. Jodie, the paper stack is yours. Wonderful. That is brilliant. Right, there we go. You can stick it on with some washi tape so it will peel off. There we go. Oh, that's wonderful. So that's all our prizes won tonight. Really happy about that. Liz, Jodie and Amber. Fabulous. Okay, let's bring in the other card. Actually, let me bring in... Let's bring in the other cards so you can just see those first that we have made tonight. So we made the lovely little blue one. Yep, two for Stanford in the Vale. And we made the um, catalogue cover card as well. So that's really cool. And then you've got this one still to make. But all the bits are in your kit. So um, the beautiful little um, die cut pattern that's on the kind of tag plate that um, goes on this card is in your um, kit. What you'll find is that some of the die cut design pop out completely and some of them don't. They're meant, they're not meant to. It's not that it hasn't cut through properly. They are meant to be still in there and just showing you the shape of them without actually creating a hole. Um, and then you've also got a second die on this piece, which is this um, other kind of um, border um, die down the bottom here that we've put on an angle. Congratulations, cross bottom. But the flowers are mounted in exactly the same way as we've done with the first card and actually as we've done with this last card as well. So the flowers are on 3D pads and the leaves are poked in behind using some glue, some wet glue. And then you've got a few glue dots and you can choose whichever colours and schemes you want. And you should have um, a blank piece of um, coloured card to make that one up with a, a blank piece of melon mambo in your kit, I think, as well. You should have anyway, somewhere. Sure, you have. Anyway, um, so that's that is um, the fourth card. Oh, thank you, Jodie. Thank you. You're really welcome. And then I just want to quickly, quickly, I'm just going to clear these out of the way because I want to show you the um, bonus project. So I'm trying every month now to also create an online project for you um, that you can do if you um, get some of the, um, the, the um, suite that we're using or if you, um, you want to make it up using other things from your stash. Um, so this month, there's not a video this month. This month, the bonus project is on my blog, on my website. There will be a link. Um, there will be a link coming round as well in um, the for everybody who's on the mailing list. So you will get a link there as well. Um, this is the bonus project. It's a little gift bag, and it's made out of a slimline envelope. So um, I can't take credit for inventing this one, although I would love to. Um, but so this one came from um, Sam Donald, um, who's a Stampin' Up demonstrator also. And um, she created the use using the envelope to create the gift bag. Um, I can't remember what suite she decorated hers with. But anyway, I just thought it went really well with this suite. I think the grey means that the beautiful, bright flowers stand out really well from from that background. So, um, yeah, so this gift bag is on the blog for you to make. All you need is an envelope. Um, something to score and measure with. Um, there's no cutting. It's just scoring and folding. So it's really, really easy to do. So, and if you get stuck making it at all, let me know and I will give you a hand. And then just a bit of um, ribbon at the top to fold over 
the um, the plate going down the front. So yeah, really cool, really really cute, really pretty. Um, and um, that's mm -hmm. it, I think, in terms of projects. So let me just let me just turn the camera around again. There we go. Hi. Okay. So hopefully you were able to keep up tonight and um, if not, then you can obviously go back and, um, you know, um, have a go at the projects again um, a bit later on or another day in your own time, whatever. Or um, you should have lots of flowers, like I said, um, to be able to make up more cards using um, the papers that you've got in your kit as well. So, so that's really good. Um, I would remind you as well to um, go to the blog to have a look at the other cards that I've made using this suite. Um, let me just give you a couple of examples. Hold on. Um, so I've made I've made quite a few cards now using this suite because I really just really love it. So you've got some more examples either already on there or coming up in the next few weeks of different cards that you can use so this one is using the stamps instead of the papers and then colored in using the blends the stamping blends so that's really cute um same with that one that's stamping blends and stamped flowers but again the dyes the flowers on the in the stamps and the flowers on the papers are the same size and shape as well as the leaves so they all everything gets cut out from the dies um, and even a bit of um, heat embossing as well, which I haven't done for ages, but really liked doing that. So there's loads of different ones that you can make on there. So if you decide you um, want this suite, and frankly, why wouldn't you? It's gorgeous. Um, then there's lots and lots of card ideas on there. So um, you've got loads of projects to, that you can make up with it as well. Okay, final thing from me, because I know it's past nine o'clock. Uh, final thing from me, um, prize draws. So I'm going to be doing my um, prize draws on Sunday this week. Um, so I do need all orders for this month. Um, if you're using the host code to be able to get an extra freebie, then I need all orders in by um, Sunday five o'clock, should we say, um, so that I can then do prize draws on Sunday night. Um, and if you'd like to share photographs of what you've um, made tonight, that would be amazing. We'd love to see what everybody makes and their interpretations and what colour flowers they decided to choose and all those kind of things. Um, so um, I will put a post on after this for you to add photos of um, your projects. So there'll be a prize draw for um, the posting, sharing photos of what you've made. And there'll be a prize draw for everybody who's ordered this month. And I know lots of you have with the free postage and packaging the other day and um, all the various bits and pieces. So if you're part of the sweet share, that gets you an order ticket as well. Um, if you've ordered through me instead of um, directly through the website, that gets you um, an entry ticket as well. So um, loads of opportunity. I'm sure there'll be lots of lots of names in the hat. OK. You're welcome, Dee. You're really welcome. So, um, yeah, hope you've had a fun time tonight. I certainly have. And um, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.